Hi guys, it's Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video for you today. And as you can see, something has changed. That's right, I've got rid of the monitors. We're not going to be doing gaming videos anymore. Now, I'm really messing with you. The monitors are over here. Um, this is my new sort of benchmarking area. Um, so we need something to go behind me here. Um, and this is what I've got. Yep, I have one of those. What is that? That is what this is right here this is the electric q 34 by 1440 curved ultra wide gaming display which is available for between 325 and 350 pounds let's take a closer look as already mentioned the electric 34 or electric q depending on how you want to pronounce it is a 34 by 1440 curved ultra wide 60 hertz display the included samsung va panel offers a super speedy two millisecond response time free sync via display port and a 3000 to 1 contrast ratio the included va panel offers a great middle ground between tn and ips it has better color reproduction than conventional tn displays but it's still no match for ips when it comes to color quality as for the finish, I really would have loved the option of an all black model, but this brushed aluminium effect with some added black on the stand will blend into most gaming setups, and most importantly there will be no nasty fingerprints on the front bezel like my glossy displays which I have to clean daily. Moving on to the rear of the panel, and the first thing you'll notice is Electric Q have included a Vaser mount. This has been a huge complaint on cheaper curved displays and has even been excluded on displays twice its price. To the left you'll find the power connection with an included cable in the box, and to the right we have the I.O. Now I forget about using the audio in and out, as these speakers are more of a pain than an actual benefit. As for display connectors, we have HDMI 1.4 and 2.0, DVI which limits you to full HD at 60Hz, and DisplayPort for use with AMD FreeSync. The only included cable is a HDMI cable which I can see has been complained about in some reviews and it's great that Laptops Direct have listened to this um, and they also send you a DisplayPort cable. Sadly it's only a 1 meter, but it's still a nice touch. Talking of touch, to the lower right of the display you can find the OSD navigation joystick. Now I am going to show you all the settings, um, OSD and how to configure your monitor but we're going to do that a little bit later in the video. So for £330, the Electric Q34 sounds like an absolute bargain, so surely for this price there must be something wrong with it. Well there's a few things I don't like, but luckily I have a fix for most of them. Firstly, the logo. Okay, it doesn't say Samsung or Asus, but it's using a Samsung panel. This display isn't an import either and can be purchased from laptopsdirect.co.uk and Electric Q themselves are a UK based company with a UK call centre. Okay, it's just a logo, what about real world problems? Well firstly, the stand. Although it tilts, it offers no height adjustment. Even with adjusting my chair, excuse the pun, but to me, it just feels like it's two inches too short. I would definitely add a monitor stand, and luckily I have a spare one for my gaming monitor, but these could be picked up relatively cheap from Amazon. My final issue with the monitor is the out of the box picture quality. It didn't matter which one of the including presets I chose, picture quality and colour reproduction were poor and I found them all to have this pinkish tint. This was especially noticeable on chrome tabs and on like the sky when I was playing Battlefield 1. Luckily with a bit of tweaking I mostly have the picture quality I desire. Now I'm no monitor specialist but I'm going to show you my settings just so you can use them as a base for setting up your monitor. Okay, so this is going to be quite hard to see like any changes here because it's quite hard to record with the camera. But um, in order to get the picture that I've got, um, the first thing you want to do is go to the picture settings. Once you are in the picture settings, you can see like the backlight, brightness, contrast. Now the backlight is up really high. What you'll notice is you'll get some bleed across the curve, so you'll get some uh, backlight bleed. And all I did, and it's personal preference, I've got quite bright lighting in this room, so you might not need to turn it down as much. This one's gonna be really sort of your personal preference. But honestly, I've turned the backlight down to like 40, and then I'm not getting any backlight bleed at all. Again, brightness tweaked to how you like it. I turn it down a little, again, probably by 40. Contrast, I don't really change that much, actually. I just, I think I knocked it down to about 46, 47. So that's what you need for contrast. And then sharpness, haven't noticed any difference with it on or off. The next one you want to go to is to the color section. Now, leave color effect alone because when basically when you set any color effect, it just changes everything back to the way it was. So the first one you want to go to is temperature. And as I mentioned, I said the monitor, you'll notice this on white and on chrome quite a lot and on like quite light blues and stuff. I noticed it was really red like really pinky. So what we need to do is turn the red down and mine was about 115 and then the green and blue leave a 
leave as they are. So then we'll set that to the user, as you can see that's set. Then you can select the correct gamma. Now for me, it's a bit of a mix. I either like the gamma turned off. Again, it will be personal preference. Try it out with a few different games, you know, things that you, websites that you like to look at, things that you like, movies that you like to watch, and find the one that you like. And for me, it was 2.2. It's either off or 2.2. I can't decide, so we'll leave it at 2.2. So there are the settings. Specs and setup to one side. What do I think of this monitor since purchasing? I must say I'm completely sold on ultra wide, and I really appreciate the curve much more than I thought I would. Web browsing and YouTube uploads have been a dream, and all the extra real estate for video editing is definitely something I've been missing out on. On. Well, what about gaming? I'd recommend at least a GTX 1070 or even better a Vega 56 for free sync But I have actually been surprised at just how well a GTX 1060 can run this display with a mix of high to ultra settings and lowering of AA I have had no trouble hitting 60 FPS in most games that I've tested if I'm all honest, I prefer playing open world games on this monitor. Assassin's Creed Origins has never looked so good, but when it comes to shooters and fast paced games, I found that turning on overdrive really did help. As much as I could get some kill streaks going, I think I'll stick to my 144Hz panel when it comes to competitive gameplay. Last but not least, overclocking. I was able to set this panel to 100Hz, but as you can see here, it's definitely skipping some frames, so the choice is yours when it comes to overclocking this panel. Me personally, I'm going to keep it to 60Hz. So there's the Electric Q34 Ultra Wide Curve Gaming Display. Now, as you can tell by the video, I'm really impressed with this. There will be ultra wide benchmarks coming up on the channel, um, and also I can also do is it 2560 by 1080 on this display as well. So, if there's any CPUs you would like to see me benchmarking ultra wide with, let me know in the comments description below. Um, also, that's sort of the first sort of scripted video that I've sort of done that was mostly scripted. So, um, be very interested in feedback on that. I know I need to learn about the camera and sort the audio out. That's sort of high priority for going into 2018. Are we on 18? It's been a busy year. But um, there you go, yeah, just really impressed with the monitor in general. A couple of things not mentioned in the video. Okay, the price you might have seen there, it said like it was sort of a Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal. This monitor has been going for between 325 and 350 pounds for the last couple of months because I've been looking at ordering one for a while. Um, it's also available from Debenhams for 350 pounds. The overclocking. Now, I know when you run the frame skipping test, you're supposed to have no applications open. That was just strictly for this video. It was something I decided to add in at the end. Um, here's some photos of the frame skipping. Um, and this is when I've got no applications open. So yes, as much as you can get the monitor to go to 100 hertz, it will skip frames. Anyway, if you like the video, tell me why. If you don't like it, tell me why. Let me know which ultra wide benchmarks you wanna see first. I'll get those videos made for you. Um, and I'm gonna be back with some more reviews very soon.